In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between gas pressure and its temperature, which is known as Gay-Lussac's law. So if we think about that relationship, if the temperature of a gas is increased, what will happen to the pressure if all the other conditions, for example, the volume, remain constant? So when you increase the temperature of a gas, what happens? The particles start moving faster, right? So as the gas molecules start moving faster, they're going to hit the walls of the container more often because the container is still the same size, so the pressure will increase. Likewise, if the temperature of a gas is decreased, what will happen to the pressure? Well, if the temperature is decreased, the kinetic energy of the molecules goes down. They don't move as fast. They start moving slower. So they're going to hit the walls of the container less often, which is going to mean a lower pressure. So when the temperature goes up, the pressure also goes up. When the pressure goes down, the temperature also goes down as long as the other conditions remain constant. So this is Gay-Lussac's law, the relationship between temperature and pressure. And Gay-Lussac's law states that the pressure of a given amount of gas at a constant volume is proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so remember whenever we're using temperatures in our calculations, we have to have them in the unit of Kelvin. And there's the equation. So initial pressure over initial temperature is equal to the final pressure over the final temperature. Okay, and that's a relationship for when the two variables are directly proportional to each other. So let's just talk a little bit about units when you're using Gay-Lussac's law. Right? So first of all, the pressure can be in any unit. It does not matter but the initial pressure has to be the same unit as the final pressure. So they can both be kilopascals, they can both be millimeters mercury, they can both be PSI. It doesn't matter as long as they're the same. And then as I mentioned, in order for the law to hold, the temperature must be in Kelvin. So let's look at a sample problem. A cylinder of chlorine gas is stored in a concrete lined room for safety. The cylinder is designed to withstand 50 atmospheres of pressure. The pressure gauge reads 35 atmospheres at 23.2 degrees Celsius. An accidental fire in the room next door causes the pressure gauge to reach 43 atmospheres. So it's fine, it's not going to blow up, it's not at 50 yet. But what was the temperature in degrees Celsius in that storage room during the fire? So it was the temperature that caused the pressure to go up. So what are we given? So we're told that initially this cylinder is at 35.0 atmospheres and it is at a temperature of 23.2 degrees Celsius. Then we're told the final pressure is 43.0 atmospheres and the final temperature is what we're trying to find. So we'll check our units. Both our pressures are in atmospheres, so they're fine the way they are and our degree Celsius there needs to be changed into Kelvin, and we do that by adding 273 to give us 296.2 Kelvin. So now we're going to solve the problem. So we start with the equation PI over TI equals PF over TF. We substitute in the values that we have been given. So 35 atmospheres over 296.2 Kelvin is equal to 43 atmospheres over our unknown final temperature. So if we cross multiply here, we get TF times 35 atmospheres equals 296.2 Kelvin times 43 atmospheres. And then we're going to divide both sides by 35. So we get that the final temperature is 363.9 Kelvin. And then we're going to convert that into degrees Celsius because that's what the question asked for, by subtracting 273. And so your answer is 91 degrees Celsius. So we'll stop here and just look at our significant figures for a moment. So as you see, all of the values we started with had three significant figures, but our answer actually only has two, 
And that's because our very last step was a subtraction, and so we need to look at decimal places. And so that 273 it doesn't have any decimal places, which means our answer cannot have any decimal places. So our answer to the correct number of significant figures is 91 degrees Celsius. So that's how you can use Gay-Lussac's law to solve for an unknown pressure or temperature when the volume is staying constant and you have uh, the other situation, either the final or initial conditions.